For this lesson, we're going to look at Fusion 360 for doing V-carve type of operations. Fusion 360 is the only application that I use for creating and programming my Shape Oco. Here's an example of the finished product uh, that we'll be working with today. And this is also something that I've successfully carved uh, on my uh, Shape Oco 3. There's a lot of threads on the Shapeoko forum about using SVG files and importing them and, and so forth. But what I'll do is just kind of show you what I've done and some of the steps that I've used uh, to import some of this imagery to create this uh, first uh, model here. So I, I've used this program with varying levels of success. It's image.online-convert.com and you can see here there's a convert uh, to SVG uh, format here. And so when you choose this option you just simply uh, upload the file that you want to convert. <clears throat> here we'll just choose uh, a, f a format or a file that I have here. Let's see what we've got. I think this is one that I recently did. There's some options here. I really haven't played with any of these options at all. Um, you know, and then I just hit the start conversion function. Once it's complete, just wait for it for a few minutes or a second or two, and you'll get a download screen. Don't hit any of these other download options. You get all kinds of crazy stuff happening. And you can see here that uh, it saves it to image.svg and we'll save that. So inside of Fusion you know we can see we can insert this uh, SVG file here. I'm not going to do that since I've already done that with this uh, with this object but uh, you can choose the SVG option, you can move it around, you can scale it. There's a lot of, a lot of features within Fusion to, to, to work with that image. So let's just walk back in time and see how I went through the progress of this. So the first first sketch I created of this was my outline of my, I guess my stock that I was going to cut out of. And then we'll progress through here. And then let's just take a look at this imported sketch. <clears throat> so here we can see the imported SVG file. Uh, and these are going to be the basis for how I construct all these different V-carve operations. A couple things I wanted to show you, there's an add-in for Fusion that's very helpful uh, when working with sketches called Check Sketch. And you can get this at the Autodesk App Store under Fusion to, to utilize this within your environment. What this tool does is it checks for any gaps that you might have in your sketch. In this case, it's, this is completely clean. But let me just create a, a new sketch here with a gap in it, and I'll show you what what's happening with this. So we'll just kind of eyeball this, and we'll, we'll get we'll get to where we think we're close, or where we think we're right on top of it. So we'll just do something like that. So we've purposely created a a mistake uh, in here, and then we'll just zoom out. Okay, so that sketch looks correct when we zoom out, but if we run our inspect tool here and do check sketch, give it a second or two to run. And we can see that it's highlighted, you know, this this area here as a, a potential uh, gap or opening you know in our sketch. We don't see any other highlights up here uh, of potential problems. So that's a very useful tool especially when you're working with imported geometry or if you're having difficulty figuring out why your sketches aren't uh, working correctly. We'll just go ahead and delete this. Okay so as we progress through here we'll just kind of show the different operations. So here we just utilize that SVG, perform the simple extrusion uh, to to remove material in that in this particular case. 
And instead of doing this all at one time, each one of these areas of my uh, image here, I have different depths. So I just chose to do them separately uh, as opposed to having the same depth for each one. So we'll just kind of walk through. And what I did is I colored my 3D model uh, in the way that I could tell what was going to be cut, what was going to be left as material. In this case, I imported a logo, a JPEG image. I didn't go through the process of converting this because I just thought it would be easier just to trace over it. Uh, so in this case, I brought in an image, uh, positioned it where I wanted it, and then I traced it as a sketch. So if we look at this last sketch here, looks like I didn't quite do that yet. And then we'll just fast forward this to the end. Now for this name here, I didn't extrude this at all. I just put in sketch text. I left it there. Uh, I don't need to extrude it to, to do a V-carve. In fact, you don't need to extrude anything to do a V-carve, but it does, does make it easier if you do have some depth already defined because Fusion will try to figure that out automatically for you rather than you telling it how deep uh, to go on, on certain things. So that's the model as it stands. Uh, let's take a look now at the uh, toolpath operations that we set up for this.